But before we unloaded at the docks, we waited at their Ulithia Toll, which was about uh, about 10 or 12 miles from the docks. And uh, so while we were there, uh, here come a dead Jap floating by. And uh, our people in our steward department are, are blacks. And one of them guys, one of them cooks or whatever he was they back there, with, he jumped over the side of the ship and swam out there and took that guy's belt off. He went on to some souvenir, I guess. Well, they wouldn't let him cook for two or three days after that. <laughs> And uh, eventually we got into the to, to docks there in, in Manila, but there was about 55 or more ships sunk in Manila Bay there. One of them was an American hospital ship. <coughs> and... Uh, So we had a place that we could go ashore there and into a kind of a there wasn't much standing in Manila really, but the old rope factory was still standing. You know, it'd been everything had been bombed out. <laughs> But anyway, we there was one house over there, pretty nice place, and it had a swimming pool in it. And so we had a pretty good time staying there while we was ashore. But uh, okay, then we're on our way back. This Liberty ship, we're about halfway back, I think, in the Pacific Ocean there. And it's, it starts listing to the starboard side and uh, I'm on the wheel, steering wheel at the time and <clears throat> it got so bad that I had to hold on to the steering wheel and my legs was out above the deck horizontally above the deck <laughs> mm. <laughs> and I'm beginning to think boy is this ship going to turn completely over but after about 12 minutes or so it eventually started to right itself again <laughs> and so then we continued on over to United States. We unloaded it. Uh, let's see. Well, we yeah we went in there to San Francisco, and I stayed that night over at my aunt and uncle's place across the bay there, and uh, people. Well, this was the same night that the war was over with Japan. <laughs> and uh, the people there on Market Street in uh, San Francisco were just tearing up the liquor stores and I don't know what all. It wasn't very funny, I guarantee you. I'm glad I wasn't over there. <laughs> but... Uh, that's what happened there, right at the end of well, the war Japan was over. That was August 15, 1945. And, uh, okay, let's see. Well, anyway, <clears throat> I'm still staying out there in the Merchant Marine. I was on a total of eight ships 
all those in the Berkshire Marine. And my first cousin, uh, Bob Boinkoff, started traveling with me. And we got on a ship down there at Houston, pretty good sized ship, yeah. And, uh, let's see, oh, on that ship, they called me a quartermaster. And I steered seven and a half hours out of eight while I was, is on, while I was on duty. I, I got 30 minutes off for coffee, I guess. <laughs> and uh, uh, while I was on there, I got I got acquainted with the second mate, and uh, <laughs> you know, eventually. We both wound up working for the same railroad, the Santa Fe Railroad. <laughs> but so both of us had to go to a telegraph school before we could even get a job on the railroad at that time. Yeah. Okay. But uh, that was later on. Okay, after we got off this ship up there on the East Coast, uh, let's see, my wife, Bob Weinkoff and I, we got onto a small ship, it was only about 325 feet long or something like that, that's a small one. Those liberties and tanker ships are about 465 feet long. <clears throat> and well, okay. So we went, got on that. It's a brand new ship. It steered itself. We went down to New Orleans, there in the United States, and we loaded up with. Rice. Then we went to Cuba. And, uh, and then <coughs> after we unloaded down there at Cuba, well, we brought back a load of sugar. And uh, so we come back to the East Coast there. Uh, of the United States, and then eventually we, in this same ship, we st started out for Iceland. We had a deck load of lumber on that ship, all over the ship, and first three days out, we were tightening down those turnbuckles on that load of lumber, and. Uh, but after three days, you better not even be out there because it got rough. And uh, they took us off of the that automatic steering on the ship, this little little wheel, <coughs> where we had been standing about six feet behind it, just watch it turn. But then they put us on the big wheel to steer. <laughs> It's afraid they could have ruined it because of that rough weather and stuff. But yeah, the water just come all over the ship, you know. And when we, yeah, it was rough anyway. Okay, we got up to Iceland, and the most significant thing I remember in Iceland was those northern lights. And. Man, they were just all over the sky, <laughs> and, and, and sparkling and everything. <laughs> but uh, oh, well, if I if 
found out Ashland was sitting on top of a volcano, like Yellowstone National Park in the United States. And uh, so people even use that hot water to heat their houses there. <laughs> Okay, and we come back. Let's see, well, Robert Bob Wankoff was on me, on, on, with me on that trip to to Iceland. He he was the boatswain on the on the on the on these ships that he was on, and. Uh, well, he'd been working in the oil field, and so he took care of the how to run the winches on the ship and everything. Uh, so let's see. Anyway, we got split up, I guess, and he went to Belgium, I think. <coughs> well, he. Oh, we got on a ship. Oh, he was on this one ship only three days. He he didn't like the 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 carpenter that was on the ship. The carpenter and the boats and they stay in the same room on the ship. And he didn't like that carpenter summer or but I don't know. But he got off, got on another ship, and went to Belgium, and then I got on a ship. On a Liberty ship, I guess it went to Venice, Italy. Oh, my! Well, my brother was with me on that ship, so he he had come. He'd been working in oil fields too, but I guess. And but he so, so he he got a job in the engine department. <laughs> but brother John. And so we went to Italy, and man, that Venice, Italy, yeah, yeah, and that that place is, man, they got water coming clear up the lower part of the houses, some places in that place. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, I rode in a gondola while I was there. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot now what we had for a load going over there, but but before it was some kind of stuff that didn't feel too good when it got in your eyes and it's sulfur or something like that had had been. The, the before we got onto that ship, that's what it had on it. And so anyway, anyway, that was that trip. We, we, how we got there was get over there to the Mediterranean Sea. And the guys from Spain, they came out there with their little boats, and they wanted to trade this stuff. And, and we <laughs> did that for a while. And then eventually we went on through the Mediterranean Sea and then turned north in the Adriatic Sea to get to Venice, Italy. <coughs> and I think... After I got back that from that trip, it was about the end of my sailing around, I think, early. Oh, yeah, we, oh, eventually, the, I think all three of us was down there trying to ship out at the Galveston, Texas. And, uh, we were in a little town back this side of Galveston, about 10 miles, and that's where we were. We'd 
jump, drive back and forth to, to see if we could try to get ship out. We didn't have no luck shipping out, so we decided we'd go on up to Savannah, Georgia, and uh, try to ship out there. <coughs> and uh, let's see. Well, here's what happened. One of the worst storms that ever hit the United States happened because this little town north of Galveston there, they had two ships in there one that was tied up there. Well, uh, and uh, Whatever it was, it was in the ship, caught on fire, and uh, so that ship finally just blew up, and it obliterated that near that whole town there. Nobody, hardly even nobody. It just killed them all. <laughs> it it took that ship's anchor and moved it over the town for ten miles out there in the country. That's how strong that sh that thing was. <laughs> and uh, I don't remember exactly what happened to the other ship that was in docked up there, but they were separated quite a little bit. It might have survived, I don't know for sure. But uh, they say that's one of the worst things that ever happened in the United States. Yeah. 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 That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, then, you know, we went up to Savannah, Georgia, and we didn't have no luck shipping out there either, so me and my brother bought a 1941 Club Coupe. You know, there's several years there that they didn't hardly make any vehicles during World War Two, you know, so... 41 model was pretty good, pretty good car, you know. And uh, but we, before we got it home, we run, run. My brother was driving, and we run into a, a car that didn't have no bumper on it. it had a couple stubs sticking out the back end. <laughs> Well, that, that stop got our radiator, and, <laughs> and so <laughs> he turned off right in front of us, you know, and, <laughs> and so we left the car there and, and uh, to a mechanic to work on it. Eventually, we went, I went back, uh, I don't know if my brother was with me or not when we went back to get the car, but I don't remember now, but anyway, we got we got the car, and then we drove it for a while, and the, and the radiator, you couldn't get a a, a radiator, good radiator back in those days that, that would run, run your car cool, or pick up, or whatever you had, yeah, so, so we've we traded it off. About got about almost the same money that we had paid for. It, so so we done pretty good. <laughs> we felt like. <laughs> so anyway, I decided to go to work for a railroad. So I had to learn how to telegraph. So I went to telegraph school there in Oklahoma City for three months. 
<coughs> and uh, you had to know how to telegraph to work for a railroad back in those days. We even took care of the Western Union business with a telegraph wire in some of those places that I worked at. <coughs> and uh, anyway, I worked for the railroad about 42 years, I guess it was, before I retired. But in this day and age, the railroad is nothing like it used to be. There's no telegraphing to it. Everything is handled by Western Unions, not Western Unions, but computers. Computers is everything is done with computers. They don't even have any depots anywhere any on the on the railroad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely changed. <laughs> well, that's about. I retired from the railroad when I was 89 years old. And. Uh, see, 89, was it? Man, let me think of it. No, man, I'm off on that. I, when I retired from the railroad, I was only 62 years old, I think. But now then, I'm 92, be 93 in October. <laughs> <laughs> so that's about it, Ron.